Enjoy with your headphones for a better listening experience. Please watch till the end of the video to have the most scariest part of the story. People who have cheated before, why did you do it? Episode 3 In this video, we explore the reasons why some people cheat on their partners and how they feel about their actions. We interview different people who have cheated before and ask them to share their stories and motivations. We also discuss the consequences of cheating and how it affects the relationship and the self-esteem of both parties. Whether you have cheated, been cheated on, or are curious about the topic, this video will give you some insights and perspectives on this complex and controversial issue. Insecurity The relationship was dead. She cheated on me prior, and I kept taking her back. Got drunk, DJed my biggest event, had two girls making out with me by the end of the night and wanted a threesome. I'm 22 years old on blow and alcohol. Mindset was, when this ever going to happen to me again? Also, this girlfriend of mine only ever came to one of my shows, after me asking her to come see me perform hundreds of times. When she finally came to it, she was outside the club smoking cigs with other guys and even told them she was my sister. Like what was she thinking? That she was just going to ditch me and cheat with some man when I'm her ride and we traveled 300 miles away for me to play this show? He was a very emotionally slash physically abusive alcoholic man 15 years older. I had been groomed at 20 but didn't realize it until after. True narcissistic abuse. Laying on the floor crying hysterically. He had me cut my family off and I had been isolated for a good 1.5 years. I was desperate. Suicidal. I needed someone to tell me it would be alright, and I found that the easiest with another man. I'm not proud. Unhappy at home. Had been for longer than I realized. My wife had poor self-self-care, only showering once or twice a week, she also would put me off when I tried to engage intimately saying she would shower and shave the next day and we could get it on. This rarely, if ever happened. Cheating was a huge mistake and made me feel bad but helped me realize I wasn't getting my needs met in my former marriage. I haven't cheated since and have been in a great relationship for the last few years. I was seven years into a marriage, we got complacent with each other. We were going through a rough time in our lives, foreclosing on a house and other money issues. And at that time, a woman came by and gave me all the positive attention I could handle. Like everybody else, I'm not proud of it, biggest regret of my life, but that affirmation attention felt so good at the time, I couldn't get myself to turn it down. I still live with that regret today, 13 years later. I stayed with someone since the 9th grade but really didn't see them much past the 11th grade, but I stayed with them 4 years long distance. I moved back to my hometown when I was 21, yes 21, so 7 years and tried for a few weeks for us to see each other but they said they didn't want to see me and were too anxious to. I realized I just wasted 7 years with someone and at the time I had to move back to my dad who was sober, but he lost his mother and his daughter and relapsed like crazy and ended up seeing stuck in an absolute cockroach infested hellhole. It really wasn't justified. But I snapped and went on a sucking spree and told him about it. Edit, it wasn't really a healthy relationship because I felt like I had to stay in it or he would harm himself and give him so much emotional support, but when I needed it, it wasn't nowhere to be had. I fell in love with an old friend after moving back home. My partner at the time was living in the country I had just moved away from, and we were doing long distance. I felt pretty depressed around this time, a very rough time in my life, and I knew deep down I wasn't going to stay with this person forever. I should have had a real conversation with him, but I don't know if I even understood it properly and he was such a safety and comfortable for me. Well, I started hanging out with my old friends, all nice people, one of whom I worked with briefly stood out to me. I set boundaries really quickly, and all went well, until we all went to a house party, and we drank too much. I felt awful and ended the relationship with my partner, he didn't deserve to try and push through a relationship feeling so betrayed. My old friend and I started dating a few months later. We've been together for almost 12 years, and we have two awesome kids together. I still talk to my ex every so often and he is doing well. Lack of communication, from both of us, and lots of assumption, from my end, in my relationship. Started to not get the attention I craved from my s slash o. Instead of telling her that, I started to seek the attention I once got from her. Did it multiple times even? 
She found out every time and still gave me more chances. To my knowledge she still even stayed faithful to me when I wasn't. Once I figured it out we talked and became better at communication. Our relationship has never been better at this point seven years in. People are not lying when they say, communication is the key to a successful relationship. I haven't cheated but my ex did when I was 18 to 19. His reasoning for cheating was that he was young and saw other pretty girls and we were so early on in our relationship, two months, that it was okay to test the field and that he stopped later when we got serious, around one year of mark, except when we'd have fights in his eyes he viewed them as mini breakups and took them as opportunities to have flings with the girls he cheated on me with. I had a long-term girlfriend, five years, cheated on me. I should have known because our relationship started with her cheating on her ex with me, young and ignorant. In my mind this was the woman I was going to marry. When she cheated something broke in me. Due to untreated trauma, I was almost incapable of allowing myself to be fully connected with someone. I met some amazing women in my 20s and always without question would throw it all away for the next shiny object that walked in. I was in a popular band at the time and had my pick. I took them and hurt a lot of wonderful people along the way. Eventually, I met my now wife. She was very understanding of my lifestyle at first and even stated it was cool for now. After about a year and a pregnancy, she wasn't cool with it any longer. She told me that I had a choice. To settle down, grow up and be with her or part ways romantically. In that moment, something snapped me back to normal. I realized that I was completely connected to her and couldn't bear losing that. I grew up. For what it's worth I have apologized to each person that I hurt. Some forgave me and some did not. My ex at the time had turned into an alcoholic and I suspected, and later confirmed, she was cheating on me. Had her move out, and our relationship was on rocky grounds and at that point a new girl was hired at the job I worked at. A week later my grandpa passes away and I started talking to her the same weekend while I was out of town attending his funeral. Realized my ex wasn't even emotionally there for me, and this girl ID just met was, started hooking up with her when I got back. Ended it like two months later, but by that time I'd already broken up with my ex. Not my proudest life chapter, and something I definitely regret, but at the same time I was 22 and living pretty reckless. I had recently started to work out after a year of grief slash depression and overreading. Me and ex at the time were in a rough spot. I had lost a parent earlier that year. My ex at the time, basically four years of dating, lost her grandma, who she was really close with roughly seven months after I lost my dad. We had different personalities but got along great. She fell into depression and I tried to get myself out of my state of slob and started working out. My libido was then higher than hers, but it was never an issue prior to both deaths. With her depression she became cold towards me and started avoiding coming home after work and hanging out with co-workers. More she avoided me and didn't attempt any intimacy with me. I was basically a glorified roommate. We had a fight one night and I downloaded Tinder and was on there for a day. We lived in a smallish community and her co-worker saw me there and told her. She broke up with me that day. So basically, I cheated with intent. Ick if I would have done anything if I had matched with anyone, but I got caught regardless. I still love and miss her. She was my favorite person and she helped me grow a lot, but it was probably for the best. We had different life goals. I was young and felt trapped in the relationship. In hindsight, it's easy to say I should have left. I should have. I felt too wrapped up in the commitments and expectations of the relationship, a product of immaturity and lack of experience. That's why I don't believe the saying, once a cheater, always a cheater. I would never cheat now that I have more life experience and am more equipped to do hard things like leave someone who isn't right for me. Things weren't going the way I wanted. She was amazing but didn't want more than regular dates and fun. After two years the frustration kicked in and I met a new co-worker who I just clicked with. An opportunity came up and I shouldn't have, but I did. I'm still with my co-worker after two years. I changed jobs and things are going really well and we have similar wants in life. I should have finished things sooner, but things were comfortable and it was better to have something than nothing, no? Not my proudest moment.
it was to satisfy a curiosity. I'd been cheated on by my ex and was really hurt slash confused on why it happened. Never got closure and it was my first, solid and loving long-term relationship. Fast forward a few years later, entered into another long-term relationship. Things were going well, until I met another girl who was hitting on me, one thing led to another as we got intimate. I gave into it because I was thinking that this is my chance to finally understand why and how cheaters cheat and use it process the first breakup. That paired with lust really blinded me. It was fun sneaking away many times, but I always came back filled with regret and even more confusion. Decided to call off the hookups and go return to my partner, we've been together 9 years, married for 2 now. I never got any closer to understanding why cheaters cheat. I still don't know if that fling was just used to justify my lust. I remembered telling myself that cheating can never be justified so just stop trying to understand it but just make peace that there is a lot of trauma to, to unpack and that I'll need professional help with it. All I do know is that I am filled with very deep regret till this day. My wife never found out about it, and this is a secret I'll be taking with me to my grave. My wife and I were in an unhappy marriage. She had been telling me that she hated me, for me to divorce her, that we shouldn't have gotten together. I was stubborn and didn't want to leave the kid. So, an old friend messaged me, wanting to have lunch. We eventually met at a hotel weeks later and had our fun. Do I regret the fling? Yes. Because the marriage is still not good, we never divorced, and kids are now grown. My wife and I stopped having fun years ago. Incredibly drunk while she was on vacation with a friend and I thought she'd be cheating on me, even though I knew her character, she wouldn't ever do that. I thought about it almost every day afterward. We were together for five years after that, but it wasn't the reason we broke up. Even though we aren't together, miss her every day, I still think about how stupid it was. I was in an emotionally and financially abusive relationship with a man seven years my senior. He met me a week before my 18th birthday and was immensely proud of how he manipulated me into the relationship, I know because he told me as much once he realized I wasn't going anywhere. I knew I was unhappy but was too afraid to leave because he'd convinced me that no one else would ever love me or want me. Then I met someone who proved that wrong. He made me feel good for the first time in a long time. It was just a one-time thing and I confessed to it almost immediately afterwards because of guilt but it was the trigger that started me towards taking my life back from my now ex. I know cheating is wrong and I would never put myself into a situation where I could be compelled to do so now, but I cannot regret it, not when I consider the alternative. I was being very selfish. I had a crush on another girl originally, and the other girl was more attractive, smarter, way more interesting to talk to and we just overall had more compelling in-person talks and hangouts. My ex was on the verge of leaving the church, was from a conservative MLM slash military family that was super wealthy and was just very naive about life and politics and overall, just kind of not intellectually challenging if I'm honest. I originally went for the crush, and she said she only saw our hangouts as platonic, so I moved on but kept her as a friend. I ended up hooking up with my ex for the first time and I think because she was the sweetest and most caring woman I had met, and I was depressed slash lonely I decided to try for a relationship instead of just leaving it as a hookup. My first sign to get out should have been when I was bored out of my mind on our first official date because all she could talk about was her family's MLM and how rich they were. We started meeting each other's families pretty quick and I think in hindsight it might have been a relationship of convenience and friendship rather than romantic passion. My crush started getting more in texts and I flirted back a lot. I had a big fight with my ex one night and decided to check out of it and go for my crush. We didn't have fun or anything, just cuddled and kissed once. But I felt guilty and decided to break things off with my ex the next morning. But we ended up back together in a week after talking it out and I felt at that point it was better to invest in my ex than the scary unknowns of my crush. Stupid mistake on my part because my ex could never fully trust me again, she had also been talking to and hanging out with her ex GF the entire time even before I cheated which was a big no for me, they ended up getting back together after me, so who knows if they fooled around during, the relationship was always doomed to fail because I could just never see her as compatible enough with me, and I missed out on dating my crush who ended up hitting me up years later which I again fumbled. Because of covid stuff and now she's in a long term relationship and likely soon to be engaged. 
Honestly, there was no reason for me to do this, as I ended up hurting more than the two women who, at the time, I'd have given my life for. I was in a patch with the mother of my kid where I couldn't even tell if she still cared about me. The fun had dried up and we could scarcely be in the same room without arguing. In walks woman two back in my life with a husband of her own. We get to talking again, do dark deeds, and end when her husband finds out. Of course, my ex was just as hurt, and reasonably so. No number of mean culpas could put us back together again after that. In the end, once trust is dead, you've got nothing. I was probably subconsciously looking for a way out. Our relationship had been over for a while, but I was supporting her and her dog, as well as her brother and his wife and their pets because they were displaced by Hurricane Katrina. Supporting them all wore me down, but I felt bad breaking up with her and kicking them all out. Found companionship elsewhere. Ended up being a big hassle when she found out. Years later I made amends with the girl I cheated on. She's much happier where she's at than in now, as am I cheating was a sad thing to do. If I could do it all over, I still don't know what I would have done differently. Only person I ever cheated on. It was during the first three weeks of meeting her online. I didn't think we were official, but in her mind, we always were. I was from the US, and she was from Great Britain. I didn't get a chance to meet her in person until a year after meeting her online. But during the first three weeks of flirting and talking, I never in my wildest imagination thought I would actually land a real, beautiful online girlfriend from across the Atlantic. So, I went on a vacation to a local hotel with a beach nearby. I met a girl there, flirted with her, brought her back to my room, and we had fun. The following week on Monday morning, the girl from Great Britain texted me and asked me if she could send me some photos and tell her if a dress made her look fat since you're my boyfriend and all. I was shattered. I panicked for several minutes until I just blocked the local girl's number nearby and blocked her on all my social media and stopped talking to her immediately. I never told anybody and took the secret with me to my grave. It was an accident, and I carried out the rest of our two-year-long relationship faithfully until we broke up for not getting along well with each other's family and friends. We mutually decided it was simply too much stress to be in an online relationship that was this long distance. I didn't want to be a cheater, and I took care of my girlfriend to the best of my ability while we were still together. I was in an absolutely miserable marriage where I was made to feel useless, unloved, ugly, you name it. He was an alcoholic with anger issues. I had been thinking about leaving for literal years, but scared and didn't want to leave my kids there alone with him. And in what was a fairly cliche situation, a co-worker became a friend, and it grew from there. I felt cared for, attractive, like a human again. Don't come for me, I know it's still wrong. But the question posed was why. I do regret it. It just made the inevitable divorce messy a but it also gave me the push that I needed to finally leave and file for divorce, so in bizarre kind of way it served a purpose for me. But never again. I was friends with a person for years. We reconnected after my STBXH threatened to punch me in the mouth via online video messaging, we lived in different states. X became increasingly abusive, and we got increasingly distant from each other. He got more into drugs. My friend and I kept chatting. X knew the entire time we were chatting as friends and was fine with it. One night the X passed out hard on the couch, likely intoxicated on some sort of substance, while me and friends sat outside, he had moved back to the state. We went out on a walk, he kissed me, and I kissed him back. I knew I had checked out for a long time, over a year. I had tried to leave a year prior to the incident but gave another chance. I knew when my friend kissed me I had to make the move to be done with the abuse cycle. I regret my choices in the sense that I knew they were wrong and against my morals. But it did help me escape a dangerous situation by making me more confident in my decision to leave. That being said, never again. Selfishness and lack of thoughtfulness. I was with my then GF for over a year, but my best friend was a woman and we clicked at some point during the friendship. Unplanned, but once we figured out what was happening we should have called it quits. We did not. Instead, I heard someone I cared about, ruined, albeit an unhappy, marriage, lost a good friend, her husband, and didn't even stay with the woman I cheated with. 
We're just acquaintances now, which is how it should have ended to begin with. When I was young, I had a friend I used to sleep with whenever I wanted out of a relationship but needed to force my own hand to break it off. I'd never tell the person I was seeing that I had done it, I just end the floundering relationship within a couple of days from sleeping with my friend. It wasn't out of nowhere. The person and I had always already established things weren't great. I'd always raised my discontent, and things weren't improving. But I'm change-averse and will very easily stay in an unhappy situation to avoid the discomfort of change. So, I'd sleep with my friend. That way I had to break up with them. Problem solved. I was a teenager and dating someone because everyone said he's so nice. You shouldn't turn him down so I felt I had to, even though looking back I really wasn't into him at all, and it was strange that I felt I owed him a relationship, that I couldn't just say no. While I was with him I met a guy who was someone I really did like. Basically, I had really poor boundaries, let others tell me what to do, and no backbone to say no and break up slash not even date him in the first place. I feel so bad for everyone I hurt overall not respecting my own feelings and having boundaries. Grown up a lot since high school thank God, and never cheated again. First time, she wasn't answering her phone. The new girl was ready to go, I was ready to break it off with the girl who wouldn't answer her phone for days. Second and subsequent times, it was lapping dances in champagne rooms at the strip club slash s no penetration, but some boob licking and light touching. I was married and instead of talking to or working things out with my wife, I expected her to read my mind, and she expected to read mine. So, when we couldn't telepathically communicate, we got mad at the other one for not doing what we either demanded or never asked for. I didn't even think this was cheating at all for an exceptionally long time, until my current partner pointed it out. Lack of self-control. Wanting good in both worlds and ultimately not caring about the disrespect and pain I caused in my ex. I am obviously sorry that I was so dumb, but you live and learn from the mistakes in life. My ex was cheating on me with my little sister for a year. I found out after I dumped him, but I was obviously really upset by it. My mom told me I deserved it since I was cheating on him. I'd never cheated on him ever, my mom thought I'd been cheating just because I had a best friend who happened to be male. My dad would never let my mom be friends with a guy, so the only answer in her eyes was that I had to sleep with him. My ex got my sister pregnant with a baby he never wanted and now he's stuck with her because he's a gay person, wouldn't have anywhere to live if they broke up. He's in a miserable relationship in a miserable house. They still live with my parents and siblings, for bed house with eight people piled on top of each other, and everything is dirty and doesn't work properly. He's never wanted to work but is forced to work a job he hates or he'll be kicked out. Also, he met my sister when she was 12 and he was 22. My friend and I did end up together though. It's been two years and he treats me like an absolute queen, I couldn't be happier or more in love with him. Early on in life, middle school slash early high school era, I got an opportunity and I couldn't see the person I was dating because my parents made it difficult because they didn't like me. It was only a kiss was what I told myself and were a young relationship, surely it's not the end all be all relationship. Of course, in that fact I was right, but still I didn't like that I did it after, and I never did that again with another person. Not who I wanted to be in life. In my younger years, I felt if I cheated, it was justified by I would never cheat on someone I truly love. Honestly, I know how those sounds. But I understand what younger me was saying although if I could give her any advice, it would be to just leave slash breakup. I would not continue to date someone who doesn't respect me and treats me like a piece of meat while accepting others offers hoping they would be better, possibly my soulmate. Had an emotional affair with the girl of a couple my wife and I used to swing with. I didn't even really like the girl. I mean I like her as a friend, we definitely talked about everything and anything. She was a cool person but I didn't have feelings for her like that. I was unhappy with my job, unhappy with my home life, unhappy waking up, unhappy coming home from work, I'm happy going to sleep. Just unhappy. My wife and I were both out of shape. Literally, the only time I felt some happiness was the one-on-one -on -one time I had with my daughter, and the hour maybe two I had with my wife at the end of the night. In my mid-thirties now and I've been depressed since my early twenties. I basically don't even really know what happiness is, and I was just thinking into a hole of despair and resentment and rage. 
and I was very egotistical, I don't know why but I needed that affirmation. I needed to be liked, I needed to be found attractive, I needed someone to want me I guess. It sucks, because at the end of the day I really didn't even care about it. I never physically cheated, but the other girl would send me pics and we would say naughty things to each other. So yes it was still cheating. I legit don't know why I did it. Just ego and lust and stupidity. I hate myself for it. I failed. I failed as a partner, I failed as a husband, and it's killing me. Absolutely killing me. And it sucks even more because the ship was meaningless and pointless, I literally deleted and blocked the other girl's number without any hesitation, and I felt nothing doing it because it literally meant absolutely nothing to me. I blew up my life because I'm a needy selfish person. And it sucks realizing that especially the way that I did. And now my wife and I are getting divorced and I'm 5,000 times more unhappy than I've ever been in my life. The definition of don't know what you have until it's gone. I dated and lived with someone for 5 years who was just a hermit. Great and fun personality but she never wanted to go out to dinner, the movies, or an arcade. And even though she only had a part-time job, but I worked 10 to 14 hours 5 to 6 days a week, the house was always a mess, my dog who needed a lot of exercise and attention was left in her kennel with poop and pee all in it. But she would take her dog out. I was expected to cook, clean all of the dishes, fold all of the clothes etc, and it was just miserable, no fun except maybe once every few months. I found someone at work whom I am now married to that was fun, spontaneous, energetic, 11 years older than me, I've always had a thing for older women, and first it was flirting, then we hung out once, made out, then we had fun when we hung out a second time, best fun I had in a very long time, I felt young and alive again and noticed that without even trying I had gone from drinking 3 gallons of liquor a day to maybe a 750 milliliters bottle once a week. We had fun several more times and we just fell madly in love with each other. Finally, after two months I told the person that I was with and said that I was just miserable and that I had found someone else who matched my energy and desires out of life. Because I was young and egoistic and my then GF was the starfish in bed, and we had a lot of fights about every stupid thing. And then one day a girl I barely knew from university knocked on my apartment door kneeling, wearing almost nothing and when I opened her looked up and said, I've e been bad, punish me. I didn't know until then that I was kind of into it. So, the fun was great and shortly after I found out my GF cheated on me as well so I can't even say I regret it. But I would never let it come to this point again. First relationship. I really loved this girl. Two years together. I was moving to a new city and school, and she had already resigned to the fact that I'd find someone better the second I started the admission process. This insecure bombardment lasted for six months before I moved. I spent so much time reassuring her and questioning my own commitment and loyalty at an incredibly stressful and transitional time in my life. I realized this girl was questioning my loyalty more than she was happy for me starting a new chapter. Ick if it was the long distance she was scared of or what. But one day right before I moved I said it wasn't working. I foolishly didn't end it completely and said maybe we can work it out. So, we continued to talk romantically. A month in the new city, I went on a date. Then I ended up hooking up with someone else a week before my ex visited, which was a disaster when she saw a text from that person. Looking back, it was shameful. I was stupid and immature. I didn't look at it as cheating then but it definitely wasn't cool or honest. I was 21 and seeking validation. Having her visit still even though I was talking to someone else was garbage behavior, but I missed her or the person she was when she thought I loved her and wouldn't cheat on her, and was selfish. Haven't cheated since or done anything that looks like it and definitely don't look back on those times fondly. My current partner and I just celebrated four years and we are very secure. It feels great. It was a real mess, a combination of me being insecure for most of childhood slash teen years, and that finally changing, and some pretty traumatic things we went through together that I had no idea how to handle so I handled it the worst way possible. Eventually, I did it so that she'd break up with me, but she never did. I realized that no matter what, I would still have the power over this girl who was willing to make big life choices for me, while I wasn't doing the same. I knew I couldn't stay, so I ended it and worked on myself for a few years alone. 
I messaged her years later and apologized for everything I did and how I treated her. At least from what she said, that meant a lot. 2. A later girlfriend, I tried ending things about a year in, she said threatened to kill herself. I'd never dealt with this before, so I didn't really know what to do, and ended up staying, miserably, for another two years. Eventually, I cheated, because I knew I would make myself break up with her if I did that. It was a really messed up viewpoint, but it worked. Been with my wife for seven years, and I would sooner die than cheat. Won't ever happen again. I haven't cheated, but I think the temptation, at least as a man, is rooted in primal instincts. Just as we have instincts that may lead us to overindulge in sugars or fats. In earlier times we were driven to mate with as many women as possible. This is demonstrated with rats when they lose interest in one mate and but then begin mating again if a novel mate is added into the cage. Also, throughout diverse cultures and history relationships were not always so exclusive. Like kings had many wives, concubines, etc. Or oftentimes there was a marriage for the sake of uniting two families, but each had conquests on the side. Jumping on a throwaway here for obvious reasons. I ended up sleeping with my GF sister. We ended up having a fling that lasted longer than my relationship with my GF. Some years ago, I came into a lot of money. Got to retire immediately and see the world. A few years ago, when I was 37 or 38, 43 now, I realized I could pretty much date anyone if I were willing to flaunt my wealth and acknowledge that most of these women were with me for my money. I got dates with these wonderful women whom I would have virtually no chance with otherwise. I had a wonderful time and I ended up dating multiple women at once. At some point I decided I needed to settle down. I eventually met my GF. Managed to stay straight and commit to her. One day we decided to go down to her alma mater for a homecoming college football game, her sister was in her third year there. Long story short her sister and I ended up in my car taking a bunch of gifts home from the party we were at and when we finished unloading everything we ended up kissing and she ended up pulling me out and giving me head and I let it happen. We ended up hooking up before we went back. I just went ahead with it. I immediately fell off the wagon, so to speak, because it was just too easy. GF and I broke up shortly after and I kept seeing her sister behind her and their families back. Started dating other girls as well. I managed to get back on the wagon and these days I've managed to maintain my commitment and avoid temptations. So far anyway. I'm pushing 40, faithfully married, kids, all that. So far removed from that part of my life that happened in my 20s. I still feel pretty bad about the whole thing and think about this a lot despite it being so long ago. I honestly don't know why I did it. In my most private and intimate conversations with myself I can't come up with an answer. Alcohol was definitely a catalyst, but it feels like such a cop-out to use it as an excuse. I was always really insecure, so that didn't help, but again, cop-out. It was a really terrible thing I did. I thought I could always get away with it but eventually it always caught up, and it hurt people. I got to live with that, 20 years later and I still got to own it. It's the kind of thing that apologies don't fix and usually do more harm than was there in the first place. I never had to cheat when I was younger because I wouldn't exactly date someone but when I did get into a relationship I cheated to get revenge for every time they cheated. I know it was stupid for me to do but tph I don't feel bad about it and never got caught. Now I am too old for that and will just walk away from the relationship altogether. Being petty and revengeful is just not worth it anymore. I'd rather being single for the rest of my life than be cheated on again. I was 14. I was visiting my mom for the summer and met someone who I really connected with. My GF at the time was back in our hometown, so I was gone for an entire month and my feelings and hormones overrode my principles. I do regret it to this day and have been cheated on multiple times since. It was a dumb decision, and she was an awesome person and we ended up having a great friendship afterwards. She didn't deserve it. I did end things though when I got back almost immediately as it was not right to string her along, and I didn't want to do on a short phone call when we were able to call while I was away. I wasn't grown up enough at the time to be honest about why I was breaking up with her, but I should have. She found out anyways and that wasn't fair to her. She was too good a person for that. 
It is going to be a long one because I believe that both the manipulative nature of my ex and my utter ruthlessness and complete incapability are equally important. My relationship started when I was two months shy of being 18. My ex was 10 years older. We have been together for 10 years. I was mentally and financially vulnerable when we met and grew to be completely codependent on them. What started with them probably trying to help me and calm me down at my worst moments ended with them constantly telling me what I felt. When confronted about that, they told me that I made them do this and that I left them no choice. Back then I was taking care of the house because they didn't give 2f asterisk costs about any of it. He has not cleaned one bit of the apartment for our whole relationship. I was unemployed, suffered from crippling panic attacks, got my first serious spike of OCD during that relationship, did not have anywhere to go, and ended up on a therapy that resembled a sec more than anything else. A complete mess. My therapist was telling me that my ex was awesome and that I was stupid for not appreciating them. Guy was breaking all the rules conducting both of our therapies at the same time, but whatever. I was the only problem, as usual. By that time, I have abandoned whatever remnants of mental sovereignty I still had. Well, they are older and wiser, they know better, I guess. They were always right. I know I should have just left like a normal person, but at that point I could not. Partly because of our skewed, intertwined dynamic, partly because those little parts of this relationship that were working, were working just perfectly. Partly because I had nothing to go back to. Also, I was a pathetic wreck of a human. I still somehow loved them dearly as a friend, my only friend, but I just could not be in a romantic relationship with them. It should never have happened in the first place. It was not working. After so many years I just did not want to admit it and chose to keep living in denial. Whatever meager spark we have ever had, was gone before it even burned, any physical side of things has died with it a long, long time ago. Or maybe I could be in a relationship with them, but my patterns were too dysfunctional, as they kept telling me. I kept hearing that in reality everything is okay, that I just want some messed up person and I'm kicking a good thing in the teeth like a stubborn donkey because it is just too nice and too stable. Okay man, maybe, I do not know. What I do know is that I gradually started fantasizing about different people and having crushes on literally every fictional and unavailable persona. About that time, I stopped going out of the house altogether because I was so terrified to discover that maybe I could be happy, happier, without them around me. I was terrified that I could meet someone and fall in love and hurt my ex. Did not matter. My body could not handle this lack of passion anymore. It went into an overdrive. Every cell in my body just wanted to fall in love. He knew about it because he knew me. Oh, and because he was a genius empath and could read people, as he himself used to say. Maybe he was. Or maybe it is extremely easy to figure out that a woman in half-dead arrangement probably starts to fantasize about other people and obsess. Long story short, I cheated emotionally once, and they knew. I did not even have to leave home to do any of this. Putting myself under house arrest just to shoo the danger away did absolutely nothing. This infatuation has fizzled out quickly though. Then another one came. And that time it really happened. I have fallen in love. Absolutely, passionately, and obsessively. And they knew. I could not lie to them. They knew that there was another person. They could have left too but chose not to. Thanks to this whole situation I have learned that they too had a long history of cheating before us. Good to learn such things after 10 years as well. Takes one to know one, I guess. I was walking aimlessly for hours, crying, and saying goodbye to our story. To our unique language. To all the good moments. Trying to make a decision and not being able to because of our story. Of our unique language. Of all the good moments. Then the su one c one dal ideation kicked in and went I back to S3LFH for Ermeng after years of not doing it. Took me almost a year of living in a progressively increasingly painful triangle to finally break up with my ex. I was trying for the longest of time to lie to them, to myself, that my newfound love is just a friend. I can still roll back to friendship. I got this. I wanted to believe it so much. 
to realize that I do not have any control over my heart and feelings was terrifying. I did not want to believe that I could have just fallen in love and destroyed everything, while somewhere deep in my heart I definitely knew that it was precisely what was happening. It was also schizophrenic, it's hard to describe. It has been years. I am a different person now. A self-sufficient, independent, and wholly capable of leaving one. I am still with the one I cheated on. I knew we would prevail. We are happy. My ex has a partner too. The age difference between us was a breeze in comparison to his new relationship. This new partner also seems to be having some deep mental problems. So, yes, they can try to save another lost sheep. I would lie if I said that I do not see an unsettling pattern there. It has been years and I think about this whole situation. I feel guilty, still. Despite everything my ex did to me and the very dubious beginnings, I believe they really loved me. I was really loved, and I have hurt someone so much in return. I do not know what to do about it. Forgiving myself feels like an effortless way out. I wanted out of the relationship I was in. It was essentially over already, but my girlfriend at the time had threatened to harm herself if I left, we had already been on again off again. The girlfriend at the time was in a particularly self-destructive episode and it was beginning to impact me, and she was trying to cut me off from my friends. I should have ended it at that point, but like I said she was holding herself hostage. She'd already attempted suicide multiple times, so I had reason to believe she might succeed. I was hanging out with my friends, and one of the people at the event was someone I'd dated in the past and still had some tension with. We wound up making out and got back together a couple of weeks later. I made the decision after that to end it with the ex, and she proceeded to get herself fired and then kicked out of our university in the following months. She also went through with her threat but was found by her parents in time to be saved. It's been almost 20 years and she's attempted suicide a further two times since then. The girl I made out with at that party is my current partner of 17 years and we have our own house, decent careers, a cat, and a lot of good times shared between us. Wasn't the cheater, but the cheated. I was a self-involved self-destructive 18-year-old, and I was angry about being put down all the time. Like obviously the best course of action would have been to separate myself from people that made me feel so poorly about myself, but naturally because I did not do that. Feeling wanted felt at the time like a drug. Feeling chosen, chosen over someone else specifically put me on a cloud. It was an extremely hard crash to the ground when reality settled in and a much, much harder lesson learned. My ex was constantly accusing me of cheating, I wasn't at the time. She was denying me and was also off of her medication which her moods were a roller coaster. I should have just left, but I didn't, started talking to someone at work who was also married, and we just had a lot in common in our marriages and one thing led to another. Part of me did it because I was being accused of it daily and got tired of it. Figured if I'm going to be accused of it I might as well reap the benefits. I finally got tired of sneaking around and divorced my her. He was abusive, controlling, constantly cheating, threatening, obsessive, wouldn't listen when I said no to fun and literally wouldn't let me leave. I got kissed by someone and kissed them back. It was dangerous and scary leaving, but I figured it out. I don't even know if that situation even qualified as cheating. I was a semi-functioning alcoholic and addict who reenacted a trauma from my childhood. Repressed that as long as I could, and it came out in a bad way. I take it all back if I could, but it sent me down a path to recovery and life is much better now. Don't excuse my actions in the moment, but I'm willing to try to make up for that the rest of my life. I had attempted to break up with my partner for months, every couple of weeks. I'd backpedal as she basically threatened suicide. Talking about plans that made it easiest on her family, considering the same partner had tried to asphyxiate herself in front of me and had tried overdosing in ibuprofen, I comforted her through that terrible experience, I gave credit to those threats. I ended up venting to a female friend who I had given advice to, and she started to take interest in me. I was weak and didn't follow through on breaking up with the partner before starting anything with the second woman. The partner found out, confronted me, I lied, and then she stole my phone and texted the new girl. Truth came out, and it was a lot of drama. 
About a year later, after I had broken things off with the second girl due to a maturity disparity, the first partner and I had some conversations and mutually apologized. We're certainly not close or even friends, but we're civil when dealing with each other, and I still care a lot about her. I was in a verbally and physically abusive relationship, and it was hard to leave because he's the only person I've known in my life, we dated for four years. But I got seduced and will things happened. I loved the guy, but I felt horrible cheating and hiding it from him for so long. And once I finally told him it felt so good to be honest. Like a big weight off my shoulders left. And now I refuse to make mistakes that way because it's a horrible feeling. Not worth the stress. Do I regret it? I regret hurting him. But I don't regret what I did because I'm in a better place now and life just happens. And this I had to learn the hard way. He has forgiven me as much as I forgave him and was cool now. We were both in dark places in our life, but we forgave each other. Something we thought that would never happen. It took years to heal and for us to talk again but we grew and learned so much from our experiences. Sad about what happened to us but still grateful in a way. We had a fantastic relationship at the start. Then his drugged up sister kept verbally, one time physically, abusing me. I kept telling him I didn't want to live with his family anymore and he said it wouldn't happen again. It did keep happening. He kept choosing his family over our relationship. So, I decided I'd become a sugar baby and save up to get the hell out of there. I saved up $10,000, got a car and moved out. He was shocked that I left him and terribly upset, but I was numb at that point and just wanted out. I told him the next chick he meets, move out with her, and don't let her get close to his sister. I was always nice to his sister, helped her out many times. But every time she lost her drugs or ran out, it was like walking on eggshells. I hated leaving my room to even go to the toilet. The anxiety I had was crippling, I was on antidepressants and struggling mentally. Two months after I left, I took off the antidepressants, a year and a half later I gave birth to a gorgeous girl. I'm engaged to a man that would 100% put our family before anyone else. I'm happy. So basically, because of his drugged up sister and his lack of care for our relationship. My spouse is cruel, but usually only in words. But IT was to the point my parent pulled me aside and warned me of the horrible things they'd heard my spouse say to our child, threatening violence, calling them names. After a long fight over it, I asked for a divorce. My spouse threatened to kill themselves. Then put up a vague threat about our kids not being safe if I didn't come get them immediately, they were at their parents' house 500 miles away at the time. So, I retracted my request. Nothing changed. I asked for a divorce another time after once again hearing my spouse insult one of our other kids to the point the kid was crying, and my spouse threw a table against a wall and a bin of books down the basement stairs, where it hit the bedroom door of one of the other kids, who was in the room at the time. My spouse was screaming all the while. I tried to hold out longer but ended up retracting that request too as my spouse continued to mutter threats, not always of violence, some were just about destroying my social life, finances, etc., at me for two days. Most of the time things aren't awful but I'm afraid to set them off so I continue to stay. The kids are teens and seem to have an amicable relationship with their parents so at this point it doesn't feel like I'm justified in leaving if I didn't leave when things were bad. So, I'm afraid to leave and set them off, but I'm having an affair that started a few months ago. I know that doesn't make sense and I'm not proud of it. But I'm doing it anyway, with a person from work who had become my best friend, starting not long after the first time I asked for a divorce, which was three years ago. My spouse suspects something is going on but is being mostly kind, but I'm just waiting for them to become extremely angry again and I will feel justified in ending it. He went to sleep over at his best friend's house, a female, after I told him I wasn't comfortable with it. He was in her bed and she asked her his tea. After that, I then let my own best friend take my virginity. We were like 16 to 17. I know now that it wasn't the best way to deal with that, but it felt like the right thing to do at the time. I felt extremely guilty afterwards, even though he didn't care about how I felt, so I told him. And it tore him to pieces. I'm now 25 and have never cheated in my adult life. That's something I've sworn to never do again.
I found out my girlfriend cheated, so I cheated too. Then we were both cheating for a while staying together and bickering. It didn't really bother me because we were still having wholesome fun. In the end we kept cheating on each other for about half a year when she decided to move into the richer man's home. In the end, she won because the older rich guy ended up marrying having a kid and then cheated on him too so he can divorce her, now she got 100k payment plus 6k monthly for 3 years on child support. I only know this because she came back to me one night after the divorce. One of my first girlfriends cheated on me after 2 years of being together. I naively stayed with her and tried to make it work, I was young and dumb, but she cheated on me again with the same guy after a few months. We for real for broke up, I started seeing another girl that was in my orbit, casually, not exclusive. My ex-girlfriend reached out to me and was all heartbroken. She made a mistake she didn't want to be with the other guy yada. So, I took her back but kept seeing the other girl on the side. This went on for a couple of months before she found out, but it was honestly super stressful. At first it was like I'm going to get you back and it felt good but it's crazy stressful with all the lying and deceit so eventually I just broke up with her after a couple of months and that was that. I honestly don't know how cheaters do it and how they don't go insane. I was in the process of getting a divorce and had gotten a new girlfriend almost immediately after separating from my ex-wife. My new GF was also coming off a bad long-term relationship, though not marriage for her. I'd actually met this girl about 5 years earlier, a friend of a friend, when she was 16 and still in high school with a boyfriend. I was 20 at the time. We really super obviously liked each other but nothing happened between us for obvious reasons. Fast forward to after my divorce. Now I am 26, she is 22. We just happened to both log into ICQ at the same time just for the hell of it. ICQ was mostly dead by 2002. We start talking, then 15 minutes later, we're talking on the phone. We talked for like 3 hours and, at the very end, decided to play with ourselves and try to finish at the same time. A week later, we met up, I had a new girlfriend within an hour of getting there. She'd moved about 70 miles away, otherwise I probably would have been going to her house after 15 minutes and had a GF in 20 minutes. In retrospect, we were both looking for rebound relationships at the same time. Combined that with some past attraction and yes. So, after we'd been dating for about 3 months, my ex calls me up and asks if we're getting back together. My state had a 90 day waiting period to get divorced and that time period was up, hence the question. I'm like, uh, no, I don't think so. So, my, soon to be ex, wife told me she's selling our house, which I hated and was extremely happy to get rid of, it was also 300 miles away from where I currently lived, and found a bunch of my stuff I forgot to take. She told me to come get it or she would throw it out. So, I did. But I couldn't go until after work and ended up getting there at like 9pm. I wasn't supposed to sleep on the couch and go home the next day. My GF was freaking out, positive I was going to sleep with my, technical, wife. Uh, she was right. I was supposed to sleep on the couch, but somehow ended up sleeping in the bed instead and we ended up having fun when we woke up the next morning. Anyway, the fallout of this was me pleading and begging for my GF to not break up with me. She eventually decided not to end it, up the relationship was extremely, uh, different after that. She ended up going to some guy's house that she met. I started panicking, convinced she was about to cheat on me as revenge. This is getting long, so condensed version is, I became increasingly controlling and paranoid, she started pulling away from me, resulting in me becoming increasingly controlling in an attempt to stop it from happening. Finally, she ignored me for 4 or 5 days at a time and when we did talk, it wasn't for exceptionally long. We finally broke up after that. In retrospect, I think the relationship could have possibly been saved if I'd managed to not turn into a total bad. We were still crazy about each other, and I was feeling overwhelming, virtually uncontrollable, guilt over the whole thing, which was causing me to act very uncharacteristically. The only other thing I'm going to add is, you know that saying once a cheater, always a cheater? That is so, so, so not true of me. There is absolutely no way I could ever do that again. It was for multiple reasons, pride, I was in a long distance relationship at the time, lust slash temptation, was exploring and enjoying life in my own way, etc. I even ended up liking her. 
it became my only other regret in life. I used to have a motto which was drink and smoke till the sunrise. It was early in 2021 when I was reconnecting with an ex of mine after breaking up years before. She lived in the north and I lived in the south of the US. As we were just actually only talking I was already sleeping and going on dates with other people. Even with a few people at my job. I was working at Walmart at the time for almost two years at that point doing night shifts in the online grocery department. I was always the closer with usually one other person dispensing orders, and usually was the one the managers would have trained the new person on dispensing and closing. There was this girl, who will just be named Kayla, who came in October the year before, with her boyfriend, who will be named Pete. They both strictly worked morning shifts. Kayla was turning heads because, well to put it simply, she was the hottest girl in the store. A lot of guys were trying to get with her but failed. I at first didn't pursue despite also being attracted because she had a boyfriend who literally worked with us in the same department, and he was the jealous type. We were all cool and stuff and became friends. Kayla and I hit it off in terms of we really got along and playfully flirted sometimes. Pete and Kayla were an on and off thing. At the time I was irritated at Pete for treating her not even as a partner and barely as a friend. He wasn't cruel or anything but didn't seem to really care too much about the relationship. Fast forward to the beginning of March 2021. My coworker slash friend told me a day after coming back from my day off that a bunch of people at work have been getting dumped when I was off including Pete and Kayla. The shocking part was that she also told me that the upcoming Saturday Kayla was going to close which shocked me because it would be the first time she ever closed the department and with me closing with her. I forgot to mention that at the time I kind of had the reputation of dating a lot and sleeping around a lot with people in and out of work. I say that because I look back now and wonder if she deliberately requested to work that night shift because she wasn't exactly a saint either. My coworker asked me not to try anything, knowing of my reputation, since she just got out of the relationship. Day came, and she was extra flirtatious that day. In my mind, after spending the day with her having fun. But that was the younger me, and I felt like I had to live life and one-up the guys who couldn't sleep with the hottest girl in the store or had the balls to try to make a move. I also knew it was my one shot since Pete might come back in the picture again. To me it was a fair game. Long story short of that day, I made my move and we made out. We exchanged numbers. After this my ex and I got back together as well as Pete and Kayla, but me and Kayla continued for another month during the night shifts with things getting more heated. I confessed to my ex that I cheated and would understand if she wanted to end things with me and cut me out of her life. I apologized and cried profusely accepting anything that happened next. She dumped me, and I knew I caused her great pain. I ended things with Kayla. After two and a half years later, I look back regretting that I couldn't stop myself from continuing something with someone when I got into a relationship with someone I wanted to be with. Pete never found out as far as I know. My advice for people is if you want to move around then that's fine, but once you're in a monogamous relationship that you agreed to be in and wanted to be in just stop moving around at that point. It's not worth hurting somebody you were supposed to be faithful to who had complete trust in you. Strange Opportunity was halfway across the country for work? Meeting with clients went better than expected. Went back to the hotel with a bit of a buzz, so I went to the bar for one more day before bed to celebrate the wonderful day. A friend from college I had not seen in 12 years was just finishing a meeting at the table beside me. We were friends on Facebook and messaged once or twice a year, but didn't really keep in touch. She lived on the other side of the country and was just here on business. Her clients leave and we get to chat. Had a wonderful time catching up, had a few more drinks than planned. No flirtations or anything close to inappropriate, just old friends catching up. We decided to call it a night and head to the elevator. I ask her floor to press the button and it's the same as mine. Funny. We get out and start walking in the same direction. Her room is right next to my room. Funny. Say good night. I get into my room, grab a quick shower, and start getting ready for bed. Then I noticed that my room and her room were connected, because she knocked. I opened the door, and she was in a t-shirt. We didn't say anything, but we went to it for an amazing night. 
Incredible fun. We met for coffee in the morning and both said that it was amazing and that it never happened. We have never discussed it since and never mentioned it to anyone, at least I haven't, I don't think she has either. This was about 15 years ago, and since then we have been in the same city for business several times and have had several opportunities for a repeat, but we never have. There has been no flirtation, no discussion, no acknowledgement. We just continue our friendship and go on with our lives. I'm not proud, and I have never and would never cheat again. But for many reasons at the time and stage in each of our lives, it was something that happened. As a response to not getting what I felt I deserved in the relationship. We got together when we were young. We've been through a lot. Both cheated throughout the course of the relationship. We reconnected, recommitted, and identified the source of our cheats and have committed to working on ourselves while working on us and we've never been in a better place than we are now. Got cheated on first forgave it and saw he kept doing it, just got better at hiding. Sad for him I got better at snooping, but instead of dumping the pose, I just what I for an eye, this lasted for a good 8 years until I just couldn't keep this lifestyle anymore. I actually got addicted to cheating, so I justified it by snooping to make sure he still did it, he did, so I kept at it. It ate away at me and there came a day I just walked out. Don't regret leaving that toxic relationship, don't think I ever will. My self-esteem was super low, I was also very in love with my ex. But he basically stopped paying any attention to me whatsoever. I didn't want to lose him, what happened to me, what I did, nothing. I felt like a burden to him. So, I started allowing attention from elsewhere to compensate. I lost my nerve before having fun with the other guy. I started crying. He tried to make me feel better, but I was just emotionally lost. I felt so guilty about it. I just was so tired of feeling like the person I loved so deeply and would do anything for, did not care about anything I did or said or felt, anymore. He hadn't always been that way. But he got so neglectful and nothing I tried could fix it. He wasn't trying to fix it. I was holding on to everything by a tenuous thread. From that breakdown on, it was just a lot of I guess, emotional cheating? Until I finally got up the confidence to break up with him because I realized I deserved better than to be made to feel as though I was replaceable by this person I was so sure I was going to marry. I very stupidly allowed myself to try make it work with him again down the road, just caused more pain. Then he reached out to me almost a year ago, again. I ignored him. I took care total care of a girlfriend and got no loving for two years. I worked 14 to 15 hours the day, came back and took care of her. Made sure she had food, clothes, got to work, paid all the bills for where we lived. I cooked, cleaned, not the best cleaner, and everything else. She is literally helpless on her own. I found out that I really needed some sort of psychical contact and she just kept saying we needed to wait. I just couldn't do it anymore. She never found out either because basically I was just there to take care of her. Now, she has had her dad take care of her for the last four years. The story has a lot more drama, on her side, she isn't an angel, but I don't want to get into it. Anyhow, she really broke my heart with how she treated me. So, I will start off by saying, I am not proud of what I did, and my reasoning slash excuses don't justify it. I got married at around 23, she, DD, was 22. We were broken but made it work and planned for a baby. My son, JJ, was born about a year later. During our dating phase we would fight and that's all it was. But after we were married, the fights escalated. Simple yelling and screaming turned into her throwing things at me. I tried to leave and when I did she called my family and everyone told me I was worthless and a quitter for leaving my wife and kids. So due to peer pressure, I stayed. Things smoothed out for about a month and started up again. I would get home from work and she would immediately hide my keys without me knowing and 10 minutes later start a fight. When I would tell her I needed space and needed to leave she would say where are your keys to taunt me. She would yell scream, flip over tables and furniture, and this escalated to her physically abusing me. If I tried hiding in a room and locking the door she would literally try to break the door down. I got in my car one day to leave and she jumped on the hood so I wouldn't drive off. 
I tried to leave, and she blocked the door so I would have to push through her to open it, I never did. There were times she would literally touch her nose on mine and excla 8m you're too much of a pussy to do anything aren't you? After 6 months of this I tried to leave again only for my parents and family again you tell me what I was. I know I could have called the police and should have, but she was my wife and I loved her. So, I went back again. I was a shell and numb and dead inside. I hated my life and hated myself and felt worthless. During this time, I had a really good friend at work, and I would spend as much time with him and his wife as possible. We all worked together and had mutual acquaintances from work, and this is how I met her. At first it was just in passing then more regular but still platonic, and eventually it became more. She validated me and made me feel valuable, heard, important and cared about. We eventually started having fun and continue to do so. During this time, my wife and I didn't even sleep in the same bed or room, never had fun and were basically just roommates. We went to couples therapy a few times, but after each meeting she would mistreat me the whole drive home for things that were said in the meeting, so I eventually stopped going. About a year after the last time, I left. I was done. My family didn't talk to me for a year, my brother, mother and sisters, too, didn't talk to me for a year because I abandoned his family and cheated, my dad looked at me the day I left and said, what are you going to do about the kids I answered and his response was okay just make sure you take care of your boys nobody believed me about the abuse except him and one naf my a 7 nts who witnessed something during one of the kids birthday parties a year earlier. The girl I cheated with am and I stayed friends during the divorce and eventually became serious, 5 years but ultimately ended things. As for my kid's mom she is now on a cocktail of meds and goes to therapy twice a week. She is doing much better mentally but still cannot go without meds. Like I said, not proud of my actions and have always wished I could have kept my family together, but that's not how things are. My ex was a narcissist who put everything above me, took me for granted, lied and gaslit me constantly, had two DUIs and wasn't going anywhere in life and he almost accidentally shot me once. I don't know what the final straw was, but I saw an opportunity and took it. I think it was my way of getting myself out of a troubled relationship I was struggling to end. Two factors. One, feeling worn down by a relationship pattern in which the other person no longer wanted to put in any effort, energy, or love only to control, withhold, discipline, and punish. Being with someone else let me escape from being completely defined by that, at least for a little while. It sometimes helped to stave off some quite dark feelings that came from some bad relationships. Or relationships that had gone bad anyway. Second, as my one friend put it, treating cheating as more of a venal sin than a cardinal sin. In both directions. Whether it was me or the other person doing it. Eventually, the second factor led to me realizing I was just inherently polyamorous, which made it possible to be much more open about what I need and how I work. Not everyone else wants to be polyamorous of course, which is fair, but it turns out that some other people do. And you can be open about these things and go into relationships honestly and with integrity without being untrue to yourself. Glory be. Also, I started to understand that I have boundaries and am allowed to enforce them. I am allowed to have expectations of a healthy relationship and require that someone who wants to be with me pull their emotional weight, be present, and work things out when things get difficult. Someone doesn't mean I have to tolerate the unmitigated entirety of their odd behavior or become some non-entity. Yes and ended relationship shortly after. I was going through a tough time with work and school and was burning the candle on both ends. We were together for a while and knew each other very well. I was emotionally there for all the punches, everyone had bullshit, I took all of hers and was a super attentive partner. Love to the point where I was putting before my own needs. Well, question? If you see someone you care about in real need, do you give them what they need even though it's at zero expense to yourself? Well, she didn't and after three months and it always being my fault I hooked up with someone that wanted me. I'm not sure. Thinking face don't really like to think about a TPH I guess I was young. With my high school sweetheart for like 7 plus years. I guess selfishly I just didn't want to miss out. Too young too dumb. Super selfish. Admittedly, karma came back around. Safe to say I know now, I don't want to ever put someone through that kind of pain slash heartbreak. 
although I have since had several more situations like that happen a few more times. I originally believed people aren't meant to be monogamous, plus, I had to manage my jealousy at the same time. Now I'm not sure what I believe in TPH. Didn't think being single and getting laid would ever be an issue. Then fun was kind of ruined for me, fun when it wasn't here was literally impossible. Somehow we're intertwined by fate. So, like I don't know. Oh yes talking about my most recent ex, for context. Neglect. Spent several years with a man that I had kids with. After having our oldest child, he began to become extremely neglectful. I was the only one working. And doing all the housework slash taking care of the children. He spent every waking minute on computer games and spent thousands of my hard-earned money on games to play. I brought this up to him numerous times, but he refused to listen and eventually I had enough. I started seeing another guy and about a month into mine and his relationship, the other guy and I split. I stayed with the other guy for almost two years until he left me. I was very depressed. I was in the military and got out to go to college, hated myself every day because I had friends overseas getting shot at while I was stuck in classes learning about things that I didn't care about. I felt worthless and useless every single day. I was trying to fill a void by feeling anything other than that. Edit, add, I hate that I did that. But I've matured a bit over the last few years and have come to terms that I was just a POS who felt sorry for himself albeit potentially for a justifiable reason, the actions themselves were not justifiable. She will message me once or twice a year and when I see her name pop on my phone my anxiety skyrockets and it's all I can think about for the next few weeks. It's deserved. She cheated as well, we agreed on fixing things but a girl I've missed reached out and I realized I didn't care my gf cheated, met with the girl, started an emotional affair, checked out of the relationship, and broke up with my gf honestly. The affair went on for like two months with only texting and with my gf those two months were filled with lot of yelling and fights. I dreaded breaking up because my ex was not that well financially and she could barely afford a place alone, so I held on because I didn't know what to do to not make her homeless. So, I waited and waited and eventually my therapist told me that it's not my job anymore to solve her problems for her, so we broke up. We lived and slept together for another month until she found a place she could afford. No, it didn't work out with the girl. She had extraordinarily little to do with my cheating. Although we were banging as FWBs for a year with my ex. I was immature and didn't know how to talk with my GF about anything serious, and I didn't want to learn either. Luckily after she dumped me, rightfully so, I did a lot of self-reflecting and growing. I decided I didn't want to be that person anymore, and it was only cemented into every fiber of my being after I met my current GF. Just over two years together and we've never been happier. I decided that I wanted to change, but I won't discredit the fact that meeting the right girl really helped me stick with it. No intellectual connection from the beginning. Let the physical connection outweigh what was missing. Love at first sight doesn't mean they are going to be everything you imagine they are. No foundation of trust from the beginning because I caught him texting and talking to his ex. Then I kissed someone else. I forgave him and he forgave me. Then he told his ex he still had feelings for her after we married. We're long distance for the first two years of marriage, don't do it. Told him I was depressed. He laughed it off. Told him four months, five months later. It's the worst feeling in the world. If I could go back, I'd undo it in a heartbeat. The pain it causes the other person is the absolute worst feeling of guilt I've ever felt. It felt like my heart was going to explode. Deepest level of sadness I've ever felt in my life. It should never get to point where you feel like cheating is even an option. Over two years later, the guilt has stayed with me. And I'm much more prone to feeling guilty over the littlest things. I'm glad I learned the lesson, but I wish I didn't have to learn it like that. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.